Hi, this is Anthony. Welcome back to my show. Are you tired of losing money from chasing after high-flying penny stocks? When you're ready to redefine your investment strategy and hopefully pursue creating a well-diversified long-range portfolio, then here are some companies that you may want to do research on. Some of them are household names, others are emerging companies, and some of them lurk around the house but with corporate names that you might not be familiar with. As always, I'm not providing financial advice here, only financial entertainment. I'm not a financial advisor. You should make your own decisions based on your own circumstances and needs. And if you have more complex needs, then hire a financial planner who has your best interests at heart. The companies that I'm now going to talk about are ones that I currently hold long. In some cases, I have just a couple shares, and in other cases, I may have hundreds of shares. I'm going to go alphabetically, and these are simply to give you some idea to put on your radar for you to do your own research, not for you to buy or sell anything based on simply what I tell you here. First up is Amazon.com. This is a company that I actually work for, but I bought all of my shares prior to being employed there. I work at a sortation center near my hometown, and honestly, I don't know anything about the company that anybody who watches the news doesn't already know about the company. I see a very, very narrow slice of what goes on, and it's an extremely large company. So quite honestly, my entire opinion of holding the stock rests upon what I've seen the company do long-term in the stock market. And you have to remember that much of their revenue comes from web hosting services rather than from the more visible retail side of the company. As always on this one, and everyone that I talk about, do your own research. The next one, and this may seem out of order, but the alphabetical order is that based on the stock symbols, is an ETF called the Round Hill Sports Betting and iGaming ETF. This is one of my few investments which is still underwater, and I only have a couple shares of it. Again, I'm not suggesting that this might be a good investment, but it's an ETF that invests in casinos, racetracks, online gaming, etc. Its largest holding is DraftKings, and we'll talk about that pretty soon. Next up is Church Dwight Company, stock symbol CHD. This is a company that a few years ago I would have not invested in just because it seemed so boring. But after watching the booms and busts of the stock market since about 1987, I've come to appreciate some of the boring companies that just soldier on. So, why do I call this a boring company? Because they make baking soda. They're famous for their Arm & Hammer brand of baking soda. They also make a wide range of consumer products like water picks and toothpaste and deodorant and condoms. The company is about 175 years old, and the oldest chart that I can find only goes back to 1983. But if you would have had the good fortune of investing and holding since then, you'd be up 19,795%, not including dividends. Again, I'm not suggesting you buy this, but if you did, you could probably never look at it until you retire and be happy with the results. Next up is ChargePoint Holdings, symbol CHPT. I have 15 shares of this company, and I'm down quite a bit. I haven't looked at the fundamentals lately. Maybe at these lower prices, it's an entry point. Certainly long-term, America and other countries are going to need charging stations for electric vehicles. Will ChargePoint be part of the future? That's certainly their hope, but who knows? Again, something to put on your radar and do your own research, but don't buy just because I'm mentioning it. Like Church and Dwight, as I mentioned before, here's another one that's kind of boring, and I never would have thought that I would buy into it, but it's the Spider Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, stock symbol DIA. This is the Dow 30. It's what's often considered to be the stock market when you hear the market is up or down on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, if you have a long-term time horizon, you can probably just buy this and not pay any attention to it for the next 30 years. And by the way, because some of the companies in the Dow 30 pay dividends, usually on a quarterly basis, holders of these units typically get paid small dividends around the middle of each month. And it could be $0.18 cents or it could be $0.85. Cents. Currently, the annualized dividend rate for these units is 1.9%. So, previously when I talked about the Round Hill Gaming ETF, I mentioned that their biggest holdings was DraftKings Incorporated stock symbol DKNG. This is a company that I started buying before the run-up but continued to do so and was down quite a bit until recently. I'm about flat on my investment with it right now 
But I think as more and more states legalize online gambling, the company should do well. But do your own research on the fundamentals before you make any decision. Next up is Double Verify Holdings, stock symbol DV. What does it do? Double Verify Holdings Incorporated is a digital media measurement and analytics software platform. This is one that I only have a handful of shares with. I think I saw an article about it mentioned in Forbes magazine or someplace. The company is profitable, and if you look at the recent chart, it's really done well. This company, like many others that have risen quite a bit lately, may be due for a pullback. That will probably happen immediately after you buy shares of it, so just be aware of that. IDEX Labs Incorporated stock symbol IDXX. And this one, be careful because there may be another company with a similar name or symbol. Here's another boring company. This time it's in the veterinary field. They make animal vaccines and water testing supplies, among other things. Here's another company that if you could get in a time machine and go back 30 years and buy shares for under a dollar, they would now be worth nearly $478 a share for a 50000 270% return. The stock price is still down from its highs from a few years ago and trades at a fairly rich P.E. ratio of 57.51, but long term should be a consistent winner. Next up is my first really big winner back when it was called Facebook. The company is now called Meta Platforms, stock symbol META. Last year, minor tech bubble burst, and certainly the company lost a lot of money after its attempted foray into the metaverse, but it's rebounded nicely since then. A lot of times, people think this is a high-tech or a social media company, but really it's an advertising company, and an advertising company that a lot of people throughout the world spend a lot of time on. They, of course, besides owning Facebook, own Instagram and WhatsApp, among other companies. NVIDIA is a company whose fortunes seem to rise and fall with the latest trends in high-tech. There was a run-up in its price as its chips were used in Bitcoin mining. When that collapsed, so did the price, but as AI is becoming the hot topic again, the stock is doing well. If you believe that the future of civilization will in some part have a high-tech component, then NVIDIA will probably be supplying the chips. As I saw Palantir Technologies get beaten down last year, I put a lot of money into it, which seemed to cause the stock price to go down even more. Since then, it's rebounded, and I'm in the black on it. This is a company that doesn't collect data, but uses data collected by governments or businesses to run through their software to find patterns and solutions to problems. It's run by a lot of smart people, and I think it's a very intriguing one that could make a lot of people very rich if you're patient with it. Again, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF. The one that I have is traded under the stock symbol QQQM. I bought it earlier this year, and of course it's doing well. It's made up of basically the 100 biggest NASDAQ companies, often ones that are growing pretty fast. But about 60% of these companies are high-tech. So when you have a high-tech bubble, the NASDAQ can crash and go sideways for a long time. Keep that in mind, but long term for the patient investor should do pretty well in this one. One day I had a few extra dollars that wasn't allocated to anything in my Roth IRA, so I bought a couple shares of Sirius XM Holdings, stock symbol SIRI. I've since then bought a few more shares. I'm up a little bit on it, and I'm not recommending this, but if you're looking for something that was a penny stock with wide name recognition, this might fit the bill. Now, since I have some NASDAQ and Dow Jones ETFs, I also have a Spider S&P 500 ETF, stock symbol SPY. You're basically getting the 500 biggest companies in America. Now, a lot of people say, I don't just want American companies, I want exposure to foreign markets. Let's face it, all of those 500 companies probably have some sales in foreign countries. So, you're pretty well diversified there. Again, it's done pretty good so far this year, and there's always the risk that once you buy it, there will be a pullback. But if you're holding for the long term, it shouldn't matter. Here's the company that I found by looking through the Forbes 400. As I recall, there was a guy who inherited a grocery store and started a company to automate warehouses, not only for grocery stores, but also for other companies like Walmart. At the time, the stock had been beaten down quite a bit 
last year, and I thought this seems like a no-brainer. The company makes software and hardware for automated warehouses that can save money by eliminating the human factor in some of those facilities, while also riding the coattails of increased online shopping. And sure enough, my investment in Symbotic Incorporated stock symbol SYM has paid off handsomely. I'm up over 139% from the time that I purchased it earlier this year. The stock has had a really great run up, so be cautious if you buy it. It could experience a pullback. But again, if you're a long term investor and you believe that companies like Walmart will continue to need software and hardware needed to run automated warehouses, then this is probably a prudent investment. As we get to the end, this is a company just like Amazon that I was worried about for a long time. I'm talking about Tesla. For 20 years, I saw Jeff Bezos and Amazon featured on the cover of magazines, and year after year, the company endured losses, but it survived. And it survived the high-tech bubble when it was beaten down to the equivalent of about 30 cents or so. And obviously, this company has done well for its founders and investors so too has Tesla stumbled along just like Amazon and with its mercurial CEO Elon Musk it's given me concern for a lot of time but I think as government mandates push consumers towards electric vehicles and the fact that Tesla is profitable this might be an appropriate security to look at again if you own a wider market ETF, you probably already own some shares of this company. Okay, I'm going to end up here. Use the research that I've presented as a starting point to do your own research. Don't buy anything just because it looks good here. Buy it as part of your well-diversified, well-thought-out, long-term portfolio. I would love to hear your thoughts on anything that I've said here. These are not all the shares that I own, but most of them. If you have any thoughts on other companies, please do share them. Again, just because I haven't mentioned a company doesn't mean that I don't think it's a good investment. There are many, many good companies out there that I haven't mentioned in this one video, although I may have talked about them in other videos. And if you're going to comment, please don't spam the discussion with cryptocurrency schemes. Let's just stick to stock investments in this discussion. This channel is not yet monetized. I need a couple hundred more subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed, I sincerely ask you to hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. You just have to click the button. If you like the video, I'd appreciate it if you click the like button, and please do comment. I can't really research every stock that people suggest, although I do read all comments eventually, and I try to respond to them when I can. Thanks again, and hope to see you soon.